So good afternoon all. Yes, uh, I'm Tom Robert Shaw and this is uh, Darren Belding. Um, we work at MeanBee, so we're back working with Magento back in the UK. Uh, we're actually, incidentally, both uh, recently front-end developer certified, so that's why we feel like we can talk about responsive design to you today. We've, uh, I actually did that at the Imagine conference um, only a, a month or so ago. Um, we've been working with Magento um, pretty much since 2008. Um, I was actually at university at the time, studying computer science, um, but always doing things on the side. So our first Magento shop was launched in 2008 and then went full-time uh, at MeanBee uh, in 2011. Um, as Guido said, you probably have already heard of, uh, of my name, at least, uh, with regards to the e-commerce survey, looking at the, the, the biggest uh, platforms uh, out there for when it comes to e-commerce, uh, with Magento being the, the, the biggest at the moment with 26%. Um, I want to do a bit of extra uh, research this time around, see what, what else I could find. Obviously, doing a responsive talk, uh, what else, can I, what else do I, can I see about these e-commerce sites? How many people are actually uh, building responsively? Um, so I took the, these, uh, this site list and then looked, um, if, you, if the technical people in the room um, are familiar with the, the technique of using media queries for responsive builds, um, I went through all the CSS files of uh, the e-commerce sites that I found and, and counted how many there were. Um, so I've actually found that 1% um, of the 34,000 e-commerce sites I found were actually, we would regard as being responsive. They had over 10 media queries on the site. Um, there was a few that were just using one or two, uh, but we said that over 10. Uh, then they're probably responsive. So that's, that's actually around like 350 sites. So it's still um, up and coming, uh, but it is definitely the larger sites. Um, and actually 66% of, of those responsive sites were Magento. And a lot of um, the ones that were using a lot of uh, media queries and uh, those that were ranked highly in Alexa were all, all running Magento Enterprise as well. Uh, so responsive web design uh, was actually coined back in 2010 by Ethan Marcotte. Um, he came up with the philosophy um, it's a little bit misinterpreted as to what responsive design actually is. Um, but e-commerce is two years behind, um, unfortunately. Uh, normally uh, due to um, browser support, um, whereas in CMS-based platforms with flat builds, uh, it's very easy to take new technologies and integrate them. There's no effect on conversions. Um, but it's starting to pick up now. Um, and hopefully, after our talk today, we can convince you to start integrating it. Um, and just a quick thank you uh, in advance to, if, any, if anyone's familiar with Brendan Fakowski, he's done a lot of work with uh, responsive Magento builds. Um, and he's spoken uh, quite a few times at the Magento Imagine conference. And I've I found um, both talks that I've attended incredibly useful, um, a real expert in this field. And also for the work that Session Digital are doing. They're a UK um, based company uh, in London. Um, and a lot of the the really good uh, responsive sites were built by them. So I, I would thoroughly rec recommend looking at theirs, uh, their builds uh, for ex uh, their experience. So I couldn't really come and talk about responsive without telling you how big mobile is. I, I don't I really want to reinvent the wheel here. You all know um, uh, the p percentages of, of customers that are visiting your site on a mobile. Um, but we'll have just a few, few stats. Um, we found that 52% uh, always have their phones within, within arm's, arm's reach. 60% um, uh, of mobile use is at home. So we spend all this time worrying about the slow data connections and, and that sort of thing, when actually a lot of people are just using it because it's like next to them in the living room. Um, it's, it's to hand, and they're actually going to be connected to Wi-Fi the majority of the time. Um, so you need to kind of get rid of the preconceptions of, of, of using the, pho the phone just like when you're out and about. It's used everywhere. That includes um, at, at home, in the office, even when you're next to com a computer. Um, mobiles are, uh, mobile purchases are spontaneous. They're just they're kind of the pick up because it's close by because you've thought of something and it's, it's instant on, whereas you don't have to turn, turn your laptop on. Um, and also because you've got so many devices around now with your, with your iPhone and your iPad and your, your, your MacBook, 90% um, of people use different screens. They, they will start researching because they've had this, this idea, they'll start looking on their phone, um, and then they need to find the same content uh, uh, later on during the day, maybe on a, another device. And they tend to use uh, search for that. So search is, is key uh, for finding the, the like products, for example, later on on a different device. Uh, one thing, a quick note. Um, when people talk about it, I've been reading, reading uh, there's all the stats for, about mobiles, but Certainly in Google Analytics, mobile is actually mobile and tablets, and they're actually very different experiences. So for the top 50 sites, mobile, the stats that we're giving were actually only 11% for your smartphones. 
Um, so just be, be wary of, the, of what you're reading and, and those statistics and look at um, your, your customers um, and the exact devices that people, people are using. So why start with responsive design? Um, there's many benefits to responsive design. Uh, we're catering for every single device. Uh, we're catering for it now. We're catering, catering for it in the future. Um, you may think we could, we could build a mobile app. Um, the problem with this is that you're targeting a specific audience. If you create an app for iOS, it's only iOS. It doesn't cover Android. It doesn't cover other platforms. Uh, it's better for search engines. It's exactly the same content. Um, you have no problems um, with indexing. You have no problems um, with your content getting to the right users based on Bing, Google, whatever uh, search engine they're using. Uh, yeah, as I said, it's future-proof. Um, we don't know what devices are going to come out in the future. There's already talk recently um, with uh, Xbox One, for example. Uh, we've got smart televisions now that are integrating uh, browsers. Uh, so we really need to think outside the box. Um, and we need to make sure that what we build now isn't necessarily for now. Um, it will work in two years' time. It could work in three years' time. Uh, and it's easier to maintain. Um, you don't have two, three different code bases. Uh, you have one. Uh, if you want to do a new design, fine. If you build it correctly, um, you'll only have to change colors. You'll only have to change uh, a couple of parts of a layout. Um, you don't have to uh, maintain different development teams. So this is what we preach a lot, and it's going content first. And the reason we do this is because you're designing from the inside out rather than the outside in. Uh, your content isn't dictated by the design itself. Um, your content is the priority. So if you're trying to sell those products, um, you're going to make those products look as good as they possibly can on whatever device is, it's being viewed on. And what's imperative here is, is getting the product data as early as possible. We've done countless projects now where we, we end up like the product, getting the product data from the client gets delayed. But with Responsive, it's, it's, it was important before, and now, now it's imperative that you, you look through all of the product data, you get it in the right format, because the, there's no point working with the same content you had before. It, it always needs a tidy. I'm, I'm sure you've seen a lot of uh, quite horrific product databases. Um, and also, when it comes to doing content first, you need to, you need to be thinking in, um, slightly more about your use cases. Um, so saying it, the content's going to be consumed everywhere on any single, uh, any, any device. Um, so think about, uh, think about that straight off at the start. So responsive workflow. So this is uh, a, little, a little bit of information about um, what it means to actually build a Magento store um, with a responsive theme. So we always get designs, and we don't know how these designs are going to come. They could be just desktop. They could be desktop and mobile, which is quite common. Uh, or it could be desktop, tablet, and, and mobile, you know, the traditional breakpoints. Um, but in reality, um, there's so many different breakpoints in between. There's so many different um, ways that content can flow. And you have to target these specifically. You have to make disciplined choices. So as a developer, you may realize that content's priority. So you may um, use a particular uh, layout, a two-call left or a two-call right, depending on how the content's going to flow. Um, if your sidebar is going to go underneath your catalog listing, for example, that's just, uh, yeah, that's one example of it. So the idea, idea with, with Responsive is to re retain the natural fluidity. You have some people arguing against that Responsive isn't, isn't right, but really we, we broke the, the web to start with. We've, we've fixed it at the, uh, around about 1,000 pixels um, because for a, long, for a long while, the monitors were all the same size. Now we're dealing with them being, they're being incredibly small. As TVs are getting um, better resolutions, they're, you, like, why fix it at this, this small um, uh, pix pixel uh, width? Um, and then with the, the, the high-resolution devices, like the, the Retina devices, you, just, you, you need to think more um, about keeping it, uh, retaining the fluidity of the, of the web. And responsive design is, is not just um, one fixated idea. So it's, it's a concept. We have responsive layouts and we have adaptive layouts. Um, adaptive layouts are your traditional, uh, you see a site and you may resize the browser. Um, and it snaps, it jumps from one design to the next. Uh, whereas responsive layout is everything is fluid, fluid grid, fluid imagery. 
media uh, queries. Um, you're harnessing the real power of responsive in this sense because you have no limitations. Um, so we can approach this uh, using grids. The grids are quite a common concept in design anyway. Um, but we can use grids that are available to us. There's uh, Foundation, uh, there's uh, Inuit, there's, there's plenty out there. Or you can roll your own. Um, but it, it allows you a little bit more um, dynamic in, in sense of scalability. So you can swap one grid out for the other, and you've just completely changed the way that your content flows. Uh, here's a very, very quick example. Um, so this is uh, one of the implementations we've done for a grid before. Uh, it's not the grid itself, but um, as you can see, there's some common Magento classes there. Um, we'll touch on this a bit later, but we're not directly manipulating any template here. We're keeping the grid structure completely separate. But uh, we'll go through that a bit later. Uh, so very quickly, you kind of have two choices when it goes to when you're coming to responsive: uh, mobile first or desktop down. Uh, mobile first being your your base CSS is is your mobile site, and then in, you add in media queries to to build it up. Um, that's that's what I regard as the ideal. But then for changing uh, sites that are already out there, a common technique, a quick quick win is to go desktop down. You add the media queries into the desktop site to, to make it um, um, uh, look different on a mobile device or on a smaller device. Um, the only thing I, you, I can say about that is that you are making uh, mobiles do extra work because they've got to load all the previous CSS, all the, all the other JavaScript, um, and then do the, their uh, extra work on top. And obviously, they are limited in, uh, in processing power and uh, bandwidth, et cetera. So ideally, um, mobile first. Uh, and you, but you do have the problems of, of old IEs and support when it comes to going mobile first. So there are various plugins around, but it's certainly something to do a risk assessment on based on um, uh, visitors to, to your site. Um, I didn't want to go into too much about like, just gen generic front end good, good practice. Uh, so you'll recognize all, all these sort of things that you should be looking for. Um, then when it comes to responsive, there's a few extra things um, that become more important. Um, like I just mentioned, conditional loading of, of the JavaScript. You don't want your mobiles lo loading all the, the light boxes and things that you're only using on, on desktop. It's, it's uh, a waste of their time. Um, also, a lot of, a lot of talk um, uh, is done on imagery. Uh, what do you do with imagery and to try and optimize the delivery so it doesn't take too long? You're not loading a, a massive image uh, on a mobile. Um, but something that, that we, we've uh, been reading up on uh, is that your, your network operator does a lot of um, image compression anyway. So you've got to keep that balance between um, having this like, ideal um, uh, solution and actually what it's gonna, what's going to happen in the real li life is, is your network operator is going to com compress your images and you didn't need to waste your time worrying about it. Uh, yeah, a very, very quick point on, on development. Um, you don't actually know where your image sizes will be displayed at. Um, so you, you may have a desktop design and you have an image at a certain width and height. But in reality, when you're defining your breakpoints around your content, that image may end up being larger than it originally was. Um, and if you've limited your image to its original size, then the quality is going to be poor. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, another good thing to think about with um, imagery, uh, quite a lot of the time at the moment, it just the image gets resized to fit in the container that it's in. Um, but as, as the design, uh, responsive design in e-commerce um, progresses, I think people will do more work with focal points. So um, the, the focus of an image is going to be lost if you, and it's going to be smaller if you just resize it, so it, uh, resize it so that it's smaller. So there is some work going on um, about specifying uh, with certain plugins um, the, the, the focal point of the image. So when it is smaller, you're focusing in on the interesting bit. Um, otherwise, the, the pictures of the people just get smaller and smaller. Um, and that would particularly become apparent where with, for us with product imagery, especially if you have situational shots. You want to be focusing in on the right area um, uh, on smaller devices. So there's various uh, different techniques in, in front ends that you probably all know about already um, for providing a retina solution. So the, the two times size, and then you scale it down with, with your markup width and high attributes. Uh, larger compressed images, uh, where you've created an image two, three times the size, um, saved it as uh, zero quality with maximum compression. And when that's actually downsized, it looks as good uh, than it originally was. And this was an interesting experimentation. Um, uh, I'll find the source after if anyone's interested in that. Uh, another one is obviously the traditional JavaScript image replacement. But it's not a great technique, because you're still having to load the original image on Retina before you load the next one. So not perfect solution, but it is a solution. 
Uh, so there's a few extra problems that we've come into. Uh, we did response to build on our current company site, um, and then when it came to um, our clients, so there was a few more things that we had to think about. Um, I briefly mentioned product images. Um, on mobile, you really want it to work um, to, f to fit with the user experience. So pinch and zoom is the user experience on a mobile. It's, it's what everyone's used to. So that's what people are going to be expecting to do um, on, your, on your product pages. Um, from our experience, the, we haven't found a light box that really works on mobile. Um, um, so try and avoid them um, if at all possible. Um, and then restrict those if, if you want to use them on a, on a desktop where people are, are used to using, using them. Navigation. Um, navigation can get very complicated. It's all based on the design, but um, you may decide that you need navigation at the bottom of the page and the top of the page on a particular viewport size, mobile, tablet, etc. Uh, purely to save the user from scrolling up and down, um, to make the, the user experience uh, just more enjoyable. Um, the problem with this is that you have accessibility. So if you're moving the navigation, then you need to take into account um, that this navigation may be read in an inconsistent order uh, using screen readers. Uh, your tab indexes for keyboard control may be completely wrong. Um, so it's, it's things to consider. Um, you can make complete overhaul changes, but there is more work involved. Um, then with the product page, you need to consider um, uh, on smaller devices the order in which uh, content is going to flow when, it's, when, it, when it folds down. Uh, you need to make sure that the, the primary information is at the top. Um, you then have um, your reviews and et cetera as you scroll down. Um, but then the user isn't then going to, uh, or the customer isn't going to then want to scroll all the way back up to the top and uh, they've decided they want to buy it. So like, think about using multiple add, add to cart buttons, um, especially when it comes down to the smaller devices. So they, once they, they've, they've read through and they pass all the pricing information, um, they then can then add, add to cart there. Then we, with checkout, we found with checkout, it's much um, just best practice anyway with, with regular um, Magento development. So convert it to use vertical forms. People don't like uh, reading in lines. Um, so the, the default checkout of, uh, of two columns is, is not very usable. Um, so, so vertical forms also then fold down very well and, um, and, uh, on the smaller devices. Uh, keep tasks within the viewport. Consider all the sizes uh, that customers are going to browse your site. Uh, make sure, for example, input labels, input boxes, and any validation message is all within uh, one screen. Uh, don't put the validation anywhere else, because if, if when it's uh, validating and they can't see it, they're going to get frustrated. Uh, an interesting idea that, that Brendan was talking about um, back in uh, Imagine was the idea of a woven checkout. And what do you do with um, uh, the progress when you're going through the checkout? You're quite uh, familiar with having a progress bar on the right-hand side or, or above with your cart contents and, and your information, but that doesn't work on, on mobile. So he thought about once you complete each step, the form gets replaced with the, the actual data, so you can easily scroll back up and down, click edit, um, and I think that's, a, that's a, we haven't implemented it yet, but it's a really neat way of, of doing it, I think. So we, wanna, we, we don't have long, but we want to quickly say uh, the tools that we use and we find useful. <laughs> step one is you have everything you need. There is no reason why you can't be doing this now. All the, all the tools that we do just kind of make our life easier. Um, but at the start, we, we were using all the same tools that you, you will be using. Uh, harness the power of CSS preprocessors. Um, you have less, you have stylus, you have SAS. Um, we use SAS uh, purely because it, it, it was just a personal choice, really. Um, but you can create your SAS uh, and make it modular. Um, you can uh, keep Magento upgradable. So you don't actually have to edit any existing templates. You don't have to put in all of those grid classes to make uh, your theme responsive. You can do it completely separately, keep your presentation um, away from your markup, uh, in a sense of the word. And what we, you spend so much time um, about like object-oriented programming and splitting things out. You know how many files Magento has. So let, let's move away from this, this one, one CSS file thinking. Um, it's fine for it to be compiled down uh, for production, um, but let's make it easier uh, to, to maintain the CSS by, by structuring it, splitting it into separate files. So here's a, a quick example implementation that we've used on a project. Um, there's a lot of partials here, um, but it means that everything is compact. If you want to change your button styles, great, then it does this. In each of these files, it's not as simple as just declaring classes. We're using uh, the power assess here, we're using placeholders, we're using mixins, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But if you keep it in this state, then um, not only can we generate uh, different style sheets for custom web services, um, 
we can swap and interact whatever we need and pull in whatever we need to generate those style sheets. So for example, you may have an external service uh, to your store uh, that requires a specific set of styles. Um, you can simply use your existing styles. As when you update those for your store, it updates it also for your external web surface to keep the branding uh, exactly the same. I'm going to go through the, the, the rest of the tools quite quickly. So we're running out, uh, out of time, and I want to get on to uh, Res as well. Um, so Speed, um, you'll already be doing a lot of uh, testing here. Um, but the Network Link Conditioner uh, in Mac, and there are other things that do it as well, uh, enable you to test slow connections. So you, you set your, your, your MacBook um, or, or whatever to, to be using, say, 3G or, uh, or even worse. And you can really see how your site performs. <coughs> Device testing, um, Adobe Edge Inspect is, is very good. It allows you to remote inspect, and uh, when you refresh your desktop, it refreshes all of your devices at the same time. Just speeds up that, that, that horrible testing process. Uh, REST. Um, so responsive web design with server-side components. Um, not too many people know something about this. Um, it was, uh, I think the original idea was actually by Luke uh, Robolsky. Um, but the, the, the idea is that responsive uh, is great, uh, but it is a programming ideal. In the real world, you're going to want to create those device experiences, have those tweaks um, for different devices. Well, uh, one of the, the great things about Magento we found to do this is the exceptions. Um, you can use these exceptions based on the user agent string um, to uh, enable a, sl a slightly different modified theme. So you have your base, and then you can have other sub-themes um, enabled like just for, for iPhone, and that might just be um, changing the way that the images are, are loaded. Um, so here we have an example of, of the image helper, and based on um, um, what theme we're, we're running on, we um, send back different sizes uh, to, the, to the theme, uh, to the, the store. And this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to duplicate templates. Um, using something like a, a helper here, uh, it means that you're just passing in um, whatever parameters you, parameters you want for particular um, values that you set up in your exceptions. So uh, this can be molded to anything. You can change these helpers to return a different URL to a different type of checkout, for example, um, on a mobile. You can completely tailor the customer experience based on the device um, and also for optimization. Uh, this particular use case is, is so that the imagery that we load on mobiles isn't going to be exactly the same size as on desktop. Um, we're optimizing it. And just, just to, to show, um, you want to create device experiences. You want to make sure that the customer is having the best experience on, on every device. And as we're saying, the, uh, with Xbox and that sort of thing, you could end up be browsing at your shop like from your TV um, in, a not, uh, in a quite common fashion in the not-too-distant future. Um, so here we have our Xbox uh, uh, looking at a, a default Magento install. Um, and then just using those exceptions, OK, it's a bit of an extreme example, but I have changed the theme just for um, an Xbox. And I think with the Xbox One being more of an entertainment system, um, and TV system going forward. Uh, it's something to really like <laughs> consider that people aren't just shopping on their computers anymore. Uh, so I hope that's been useful. It's been a bit of a mix of statistics and, um, and the uh, technology that we use. Um, but what I will say is I, I think you should, be, you should be doing this now. Um, you can't afford not to be. You should be setting the standard that your, your business is running to. Quite often the excuses are we don't have time for responsive. It's going to cost you more money. Like from my, my perspective, I want to offer that to all of my clients as standard in the same way you'd offer unit testing as standard. It's not an optional extra. It's just, it's just good practice. Uh, well, thank you very much.